Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> You're probably thinking, what on earth is that? Uh, well, this is uh, a little pumpkin monster thing. Um, it was, uh, it's 3D printed. I printed it on my, on my resin printer. Uh, and this was a free model that was given away by uh, Black Scrolls Games. You've seen me paint some of their stuff before. And uh, yeah, they gave this away uh, at Halloween just as a, a little, you know, gift. So uh, I printed it out and it turns out my daughter's quite enamored of it. And originally I was just going to paint it up and um, give it to her. And then she came up with this idea for a little diorama. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's get on with it. Okay, so what I want to do first is just talk a little bit about this model and, and how it works. Um, so basically, as it's supplied, his face can be removed like that, and there's a you can see there's a big hole where his eye goes. Let me just show you that quickly. So he has an eyeball. This is I printed this on my uh, on my filament printer because I don't have any clear resin, and basically that pushes in the inside like that. I have to be careful with this not to break it. So that goes like that, and there you go. Now you see he's got an eyeball. And you'll notice that the inside of his head is hollow. And that is for one of these. Now this you may have seen. You can get these on Amazon and various other places. It's basically a balloon light. Uh, and the idea is they're made to go inside you know, balloons. You blow them up. Um, this, the way it works, is there are a couple of batteries in there with an LED. And when you pull this little plastic tab out, the LED lights up. Now in this case this hole is big enough for that thing to fit in and when you put it together it makes his eye light up like that you see which is all very clever and Black Scroll Games use these quite a lot in a lot of their models for like fireplaces and things um, and they're quite good because you can buy these things quite cheap and get quite a lot of them. The only problem is with these is you can't change the batteries in them or they're not designed to have the batteries changed in them. And so the idea is, like in their normal guise, you put these in a balloon, and then when they go, batteries go flat, you just throw them away, which is a bit wasteful. Um, so what I'm gonna do instead, you'll notice here, uh, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, let's try and get an angle on it. In here, oh, let me get, a, I need a pointy thing. Um, that's better. Right, in there, you'll see there's a hole. Uh, hopefully you can see that, that goes right through the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, uh, I'm just <laughs> trying to get a view of that hole. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an LED in that hole and then I'm going to put this thing on a base and uh, it's going to be lit up like that with a rechargeable battery inside the base. So, so now let me show you what we're going to do uh, for the diorama because it was all my daughter's idea. So for our diorama, we're going to use this. Uh, this is a, a bell jar uh, that uh, came from uh, the range. Uh, they sell these. They're actually quite cheap. You can find them. They're about two, two or three pound each. They're only plastic and MDF, but they're all right. Um, but basically what you get is the bell jar. You get the base, and then there's a bit inside here. Uh, this actually goes inside to cover up the hole. Now you see, I don't know where you can see that. There's a big hole in the base, and that hole is actually designed to take a light. Uh, let me show you. If you get something like this, this is a, one of these little battery operated tea lights. This is actually one I got from um, uh, the pound shop. It's Halloween themed, obviously. Um, but if you take, if you just pop the insides of it out, just basically put a screwdriver down the side, you can pop the inside out. And this base part here with the light is a press fit in that hole uh, and so you can basically put a light in that hole in the bottom cover up the whole thing with this board which has a little hole for the light to come through and then you can illuminate the insides so you could do it that way if you wanted but we're going to do something a little bit different um, now the basic idea for this uh, diorama is as follows let me show you so this is the uh, the bit of wood, uh, the circular piece out of um, the bell jar. I've already painted this black, as you can see. 
and we're actually going to build the diorama on this. So it's going to be a very small diorama. I mean, this is, I think this is 95 millimeters, about three and three quarter inches across. Um, and what my daughter said when she looked at the, the little beastie was that it looked like he should be in a cemetery or a graveyard. And so I thought, what I'm going to do is I'll put him in the middle and I've printed some, uh, oh, <laughs> you can't really see a lot of this because it's too dark. Um, I've printed some uh, gravestones here. Um, and these, again, just ones I found on, I think, Thingiverse or somewhere. Um, so I just printed a few off. So we'll paint these up and kind of have the beast in the middle and then just a, I might not even use all of them because there's really not a lot of, of space there um, might just have one or two of them but just have a couple of graves around it and, and a bit of scenery really uh, so that's it for that uh, I've already done some prep work as you can see um, so I've painted this I've also um, basically modified the underside of it uh, I'm sorry that's a bit difficult to see because it's all painted black but um, I 3D printed a box to go on the bottom of the base uh, and that has a hole in it and that's where all our electronics will be and then we'll have this bit on the top like so uh, so that will just get stuck down when the diorama is done and then we'll obviously have the bell jar over the top so we'll come back to all of this later but for the minute, we just need this bit and our model. And um, I think we can make a start on it. So what I've done, just to show you before I start, is uh, I've used a technique on this called um, zenithal highlighting. Uh, now, it's just, it, you may or may not be familiar with that term. But basically what I did was I sprayed the whole model black. And then I hit it uh, from above with white. Uh, just kind of misted over it with white and it's kind of the opposite of pre-shading if you see what I mean so instead of pre-shading it you're kind of pre-highlighting it so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a start on this with this uh, goblin green and I'm just going to do all of these kind of tentacly bits uh, and all the leaves and everything with this first Right, so there we are. That's the first coat of green on. That's our uh, goblin green. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go around and shade it a bit with this uh, delightfully named snot green. So well, let's give that a go. Okay, now I'll thin this down a fair bit. And what I'm going to do is just sort of go into all the little recesses and that. Just to darken it a little bit. Like I say, I'm not going to go mad with this because it's um, it's just a bit of fun, really. But it's a good way to practice some techniques. So, as I say, all of these little recesses and that on the on the tentacles and everything. just to darken them a little bit. And also sort of around the base of the spines and all that kind of thing, just anywhere that needs a bit of, a bit of darkness, shall we say, a little bit of shading. Just so it's not quite so monolithic or monochromatic there we go like that so I'll get on and do the rest of this and then we'll uh, come back and see what it looks like 
Right, so there we go with that. A uh, little bit of shading there. And now we're going to do the opposite and highlight it a little bit with this uh, lovely putrid green. So same deal again. We'll just sort of water this down quite heavily and just go around the edges and highlight things a little bit. Just trying to keep all this under the camera, so I do apologise if I move sometimes. does it so I think what we'll do now is make a start on the actual pumpkin bits see how we get on with that right so we're gonna make a start now on the uh, the pumpkin as I said and what I've actually got here is the um, the dust and rust set from uh, life color and I'm gonna start uh, using this uh, Rust Light Shadow 1 because it's quite a nice uh, orangey colour. So we'll use that as a base coat and then we'll use the other two to uh, highlight it and shade it. So this one first. too bad I'll, uh, I'll do the rest of this and we'll come back and see what it looks like right so that's the uh, the rust light shadow on there I think that looks uh, pretty good actually so what we'll do now is go in with the uh, the base color rust and basically do some shading and whatnot right so as before I've uh, I've thinned this out quite a lot And uh, so just hit the low areas. I might actually want to thin down a bit more as it goes. I mean, it will kind of even out a bit as it dries. It always looks a lot worse. You put it on and you think, oh my God, this is awful. But it will actually, um, it will actually kind of settle a bit as it dries. See, you might think, why why don't I take the face off and paint it separately? It was basically because the um, I need the shading to match across the uh, the join, so that's why I'm doing this with his face on. But I'll um, I'll get on and do the rest of this, and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. Right, so there we go with our bit of shading applied. Looks pretty good. And again, we'll just now go in with the uh, the light shadow rust and uh, just do a little bit of very light highlighting. And again, we'll just uh, carry on with this and come back when it's done. Right, there we go. Doesn't look too bad, does it? So what I'm going to do now is I'll just go and do all the details, uh, like the um, uh, the various stalks, all the spines. Uh, I'll do his teeth, obviously. Um, but I think that will pretty much do us for this. So I'll, I'll do all those bits, uh, and then I'll come back and show you what it's done, what it looks like when it's all done. Right, so there he is, pretty much done. Um, I've just noticed a couple of bits that need a bit of touch up, but nothing too serious. I've put the uh, the light inside 
just for now, just to so you can see what he looks like with his eye lit up. Uh, but I think he looks pretty good. So, um, yeah, very pleased with that. So the next step is to, uh, well, make the diorama. So uh, let's get on with that. Okay, so this is all dry now. Um, and it's time to start on the base. So I've got him on the base, as you can see. And I've got a few other bits prepared. So I've got uh, three of the um, gravestones, because that's pretty much all we've got space for. So I'm going to put one, I mean, I haven't decided exactly where they're going to go yet, but it'll be something like this. Uh, probably put that one over there, actually. I'll put that one in the front, like that. And I've also got some other bits here. And these are, um, they're actually uh, supports, 3D print supports from my resin printer. And what I tend to do is whenever I get something that's a fairly interesting shape like this, I just keep it in a little tub. And uh, so there's another one. And I'm going to put these at the back, uh, kind of as a like a fence or something, um, just for a bit of interest. And then obviously there'll be a few other bits go on there as well. So the next step is to put uh, a substrate on this base, which is going to be a bit of filler. Uh, just to provide something for all of this to sit on. So let's move all this out of the way for a minute. And uh, move him out of the way. And for that I'm going to use, oh if I can get it under the camera, this. Uh, this is Manger's Ready Mix Filler, which came from uh, the range. So we're just going to put a layer of this on here, not a lot, just maybe like a millimetre or two thick. Um, but it's just to give us uh, something to, to kind of give it a bit of texture. Right, so I'm going to put this on with a little palette knife here. So I'll just get some of this out of here. Dob it on there and then spread it out a bit. Like I say, it doesn't need to be a huge amount, just enough to um, to cover the base and give us a bit of a a bit more texture than just the wood alone. Right, I'll finish this off and then we'll see what it looks like. Right, there we are. That looks not too bad. So, what I'm going to do now, while this is still wet, I've got to be a little bit careful with this, is I'm going to, just make sure I've got it on my fingers, I'm going to take our little beastie here and I'm going to sit him where he needs to go in the middle over the top of the hole like that and just push him in a little bit and then I'm going to take our fence and I'm going to just push that in like that and take it out again let's put that there and I'll put the other bit there. All right, let's get these off of the bases. All right, and we'll put this one here. And what I want to do is just put these on so that they make like an indent in the uh, filler. So that when I go to put them back on, when the filler's dry, they'll be all ready to go, sort of thing. I'll put that one there like that. I'm not actually expecting them to stick to the filler at the moment. It's just to, like I say, just to provide an indent. And then once it's dry, or once it's started to dry, then we can uh, look at what else we're gonna do. I'll put that one there like that. So what I'll do now is I'll just leave this uh, to dry for a little while, at least let it set up a bit, and then I'll take these pieces off and then we'll go from there. Right, so here's our little beastie all lit up. Um, you may have noticed there's been a bit of a weird cut uh, and basically because we had a little bit of a disaster. 
Uh, I recorded all of the putting together of all of this and then when I went to edit the footage the files were corrupt. So <laughs> just like really. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk you through uh, quickly what I've done. It's all fairly self-explanatory. Uh, you've seen me do all this stuff before. Um, so I'll link to another video that shows how this goes together. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things. Um, so if I just pop his face off for a minute, you can see we've got our LED in there. Uh, I put some brown shrink wrap on the wires just to help disguise them a little bit. So his face goes on like so, and you can see it makes his eye light up. Um, so let's just turn that off for a second. I've put a connector in the middle here, and the reason I've done that is so that this can be a separate entity for now, and I can wire it all up like this, and then still be able to get it apart to feed it through uh, the base, um, or through the diorama into the base. So that's that. Um, as far as this part goes, what we've got is a 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery. This is a 350 milliamp hour one, which will be more than enough to run this LED for a long time. So that's wired uh, to the charging circuit. So you see we've got battery plus battery negative. So that's for the battery. And then we've got the negative side, see out negative, goes to um, the plug. And then on the positive side, we go out to uh, the switch. Um, this is just a torch switch. You can get these on eBay or Amazon. If you're looking for them, it's a, a torch switch is what you want. And then the other side, positive, goes again to the plug. So we're just breaking that circuit. So that's basically it. Unfortunately, I say all of the footage of me actually putting this together is all gone. So yeah, that's these things happen. Um, so what we've got to do now is take this, uh, this is a 30 millimeter wargaming base. And again, you've seen me use these before. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some holes in this to fit the charging circuit, which will go there, uh, the switch that will go in the bottom, and then we're gonna cut a hole in the top uh, so that we can basically take the uh, these two charging lights um, and basically bring their output uh, to the front where we can see it. Well, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so let's get cutting all these holes and then we'll put it all together. So the first step is to take your charging circuit and it will quite nicely fit in this slot, which is useful. So put it in the middle, take your knife and just mark each side of it like that. And then we can get that out of the way. And then we just make sure we can see those marks. Get a pair of clippers. And then what we want to do is just cut straight down like that. And then cut across at an angle to get this out. And basically what we want to do is cut out as much of this as we can. Oh, get off. And then we'll clean the rest up with a knife. Like that, you see. And that will now allow the charging circuit to actually fit. Oh, you can see that. Uh, fit in that slot like that. So I'll clean all this up. Uh, I'll drill a 7mm hole in the bottom for the switch to go in and then I'll drill another little hole in the top for the charging status lights. Now for that I'm going to use uh, a piece of this. This is just a piece of old clear sprue from another model and basically what we do is we take this corner here and I'll just cut that off now actually and show you. and we cut it deliberately too long because we can always trim it down afterwards. Like that. And I'll just nip that bit off as well. And basically what we'll do is that will sit on top of those lights like that. And then when they light up, the light will be, uh, I can never remember if it's diffracted or diffused diffracted I think, or oh, refracted, um, up here and out to the front and then this will go out through there 
and you can see the light from the outside but I'll show you that when we when we get to it so I'll cut all these holes and then we'll stick it all together right so that's our various holes drilled in that although the bottom one is slightly off center which is just, but never mind it doesn't matter um, so basically the switch goes in the bottom like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this in with hot glue but I find with these ones it helps sometimes just to put a little drop of uh, super glue on it first just to hold it in place all right, and then we'll pop that in there and just let that set up. Okay, now put that in there. And then we need to hot glue it all together. This is where you end up burning your fingers on the glue. Some on this side. Like that. Right, we'll let that set up for a minute and then I'll show you what we're going to do with this right so for this basically what we want it to do is sit on top of those LEDs like that so what we want to do is get it in place through the hole like that and then we take our hot glue and we put a nice blob of it over both LEDs like that Got to be a bit quick here, and then we flip that round and we stick it in between the two LEDs like that. And I'll put a little bit more on just to make sure it stays. Like that. And then what will happen is the glue will basically uh, refract the light into this uh, clear plastic and then bring the light out to the front. I'll show you it in a minute. Once it's dry I'll plug it in and you can see what it looks like. Right, so if I plug in the USB cable now like that and you'll see the LEDs lit up and if we look at the front you can see it's brought that light, you can't really see it very well because it's a bit bright but the um, but it's actually brought that light to the front. So now we can see those charging status lights from outside of the base. So, Okay, so here's the uh, base. I basically gave this uh, a coat of brown uh, paint out of a rattle can just to give it a base coat. And what I'm gonna do now, oh, take that off, is uh, I'm gonna paint this uh, with this, um, this is, green earth so we'll give it a slob of that and uh, cover up the bits we want to cover up because basically what I want to do that's far too much paint never mind there are certain bits that I want to leave um, brown but we'll talk about that in a minute so what we'll do first is just get some uh, paint on the rest of it and go from there. So I'm going to put this on just fairly heavy. To start with. It might need a couple of coats but possibly not. We'll see what it's like. Right, I'll dry this off and I'll give it a couple more coats and uh, then we'll come back and see what it looks like. Right, so this is more or less dry now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it on top of these couple of uh, paint tins. And the reason I'm doing that is because what I want to do now is start putting everything on. So what I'm going to do to start with is I'm just going to use a little drop of super glue just because it's quick more than anything and just 
start sticking things down and then we get our back in there and then we'll pop this one in so I say this is just to hold it for a second just to keep it in place Last but not least, our little wooden cross. Like that. There we go. And now we can pop our little beastie back on. Now I've got to be a little bit careful here because this hole is pretty much exactly the same size as the <laughs> as the fitting, so I'll make sure it goes on straight. There we go. That's it. Right. Just thread that through there. Okay. So now I'm going to put on some grass and things so this is uh, woodland scenics blended turf that I'm putting on now and I'm just going to basically sprinkle it all over to get a good coverage and then we can move it around a bit with a paintbrush and various other tools and then glue it in place. So we want quite a lot of this on because it will settle once we put the glue on. I want to put quite a lot around the beastie himself because uh, I want to be able to push it into place to kind of bank it up a little bit around him to make him look like he's part of the ground rather than just sitting on top of it. I'd say the stuff that's on top of him we can just brush off afterwards, that doesn't matter. To make him look like he's, as I say, part of the ground rather than sitting on top of it. I want to do is clear it off of this grave a little bit because I want that to look like it's been freshly dug. Okay. Like I say, this will settle a lot once we put the um, the glue on it. Right. So what I'm also going to put on is some more grass. This is again woodland scenics, but this is the uh, the burnt grass. And we're going to put a little bit of that on now and then we'll put a bit more of that on afterwards because it's very good for tying everything together. So we'll just put a little bit on now. And I've got various other bits here that I'm going to put on. So I've got some uh, woodland signets clump foliage. So we'll just put a few little bits of that on here and there. Uh, and I've got all kinds of other little bits and bobs to go on so let's put a little bit of this on just to uh, I'll just drop these on to start with and then I'll just move them into where I want them as we go along alright so that will do for that and what I've also got here are some little stones. These are little granite chips. And I'm going to try something. I'm not quite sure if this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. What I want to do is just put some around one of these graves just to kind of 
outline it like someone's tried to you know jazz it up a bit or whatever the appropriate phrase is for a grave I don't, know. I don't really jazz up graves do you but you know what I mean try to make it a little bit more decorative these are just uh, granite chippings um, I got these when they resurfaced the roads around here a while ago and there was tons of this stuff just laying all over the place and so I just went out with a, a little pot and just picked a load of it up that looks pretty good that right so and I've also got here some these are actually uh, tea leaves and uh, they're green tea leaves so I bought some some cheap uh, tea leaves tea bags and um, I just uh, opened up the bags and put all the tea into this pot and they make good leaves like leaf scatter too bad but uh, what I do is I keep all the um, all the bits and pieces in these plastic tubs so when you get the woodland scenic stuff it usually comes in a bag so I take it out and I put it in these tubs it just makes it a bit easier to work with so okay let's clean this grave off a bit more because what I want to do is this is going to be tricky but we'll give it a go what I've got here is some sand all right so this is just like sand from the beach and I've just got a little spoon and I'm going to just put some because I want to kind of heat this up so it looks like dirt and what I'll do is once it's dry I'll paint it but I basically want it to look like piled up earth like that ah that looks good i like that obviously it's not the right color at the moment but it will it's to give us the effect and then like i say once it's all dry we can put some paint on it right and now the last step is we come back in with our burnt grass and we just put a little bit more of this over everything and it it's amazing how well this stuff works at just tying everything together right I think that will do us let's put all this stuff away so I have here some uh, scenery glue oh, that I made before. Uh, I'll put a link to the video for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this all over just to basically nail everything down. But you can see how much that's all settling once it has the uh, once the glue hits it, it kind of sinks down. That's why I put so much on. Right, and now we'll just leave that to dry. Right, so. The last step is I'm going to use some of this um, uh, crafter's choice. This is just cheap acrylic paint and this is uh, transparent brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of this on the sand just to colour it and make it a bit more muddy. Might need to thin this down, I'm not sure. I 
think we'll be all right. So I'll do this bit, get this all painted in, and then uh, we can put it on the base. Okay, so now the last thing we need to do is put this on the base. So what I'm going to do is just connect up the wires very carefully, like that. And then put the wires down inside the base. And what I've got on here, these are um, sticky dots. Now, they're kind of like a non-permanent adhesive, but if you've ever had like a, a credit card or something sent through the post and it's, it's stuck to the letter with a little sticky blob, that's what these are. So they're great for doing things like this where you want to be able to put something on there, but if at some point in the future you want to take it off, then you can. So let's just make sure we've got him facing the front. And we can pop him down like that. And he'll stay put. And there we go. Let's just make sure he works. Yep, there we go. His eye lights up. So, uh, right, I think we can uh, <laughs> wrap this up now. Quite pleased with this. And here is our finished article. Uh, I'm quite pleased with how this came out, considering uh, how quickly I did it. So, um, yeah, I think the only thing I would say is it might be nicer if the bell jar wasn't quite so tall. Um, I suppose it wouldn't be beyond the realm of possibility to cut it down a bit, but I think it looks all right like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm quite pleased with this. And uh, my daughter's just turned up. Say hello, Katie. Hello, Katie. Always a comedian. So... Anyway, more importantly, what do you think of it? I think I'm mildly content. <laughs> you do know that's your catchphrase now, right? It's like there's millions of people out there who now think <laughs> just... Well, not millions. It would be nice if it was millions, but several thousand people out there who uh, now think that's your catchphrase. So, well done. But uh, is that what you were after? Something like that? Too light. It needs to be darker. What do you mean it needs to be darker? It needs to be darker. What needs to be darker? The whole thing needs to be darker. What do you mean it needs to be darker? How is it going to be darker? It doesn't look like a graveyard. It's green monster in it. Unless it's just like blue in daylight. Well, that's because it's bright in here. Because I've got the lights on. Can't turn the lights off. No, you can't see anything, you see. There, yeah, good, that looks better. Is that better, is yeah. it? Okay, fair enough. Well, when you put it in your room, you can leave the lights off. Yes. Anyway, so uh, she's mildly content, apparently, which is, I think, probably as much as we can hope for. I think you look cute. <laughs> you do a veggie wedgie. <laughs> anyway, I'll... Uh, <laughs> I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed this little diversion, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Say goodbye, Katie. Goodbye, Katie. Anyway, thanks, guys. Cheers. Bye.